Hello and thanks for checking out my Inventor Tips and Tricks series. This is not so much a tip or trick, more of a piece of advice for new starters, for new Inventor users. I fully expect experienced Inventor users to be well aware of this and to understand why this is uh, important. So it's all about how to position the first sketch in your part file correctly. So I'm going to start by creating a new 2D sketch and in this instance I'm going to create the sketch on the XY plane. There's your X axis, your Y axis, your Y axis, that's the XY plane. It doesn't always have to be on that plane but if it's just a very simple part you're doing that is the normal plane that you would typically start sketching on. Okay, this only really applies to symmetrical shaped uh, part files like rectangles and squares and circles, anything that's got a, a sort of standard center point to it. What not to do? Please don't do this. Start by creating a rectangle, hitting the center point, and then starting your part file like that. Do not do that. If you work in a drawing office and you create your part files like this, you will be disliked greatly by your colleagues. They will dislike you. They will talk about you behind your back as that guy who doesn't know what he's doing. How did he get a job? Why I get paid the same as him and he's rubbish. And yeah, yeah, you, you don't want to do that. Uh, the reason for that, I'll, I'll tell you in a bit, but please do not start your part files like that. What we should be doing, what we should be doing. Okay, any rectangular, square or circular feature should always be symmetrical around this little dot here. This dot here is what is known as the center point. In the origin folder we have x-axis, y-axis and the z-axis where they all intersect is the center point. It's the very central point of the part file you want your part file to be symmetrical around that point. How do you do it? Well, back in the olden days we would do this, we would draw a rectangle-ish, sort of symmetrical around the center point, sort of done by eye. You would then create a horizontal constraint between the green dot and the center point, and that would align them constrained to each other, and then same again with a vertical constraint between the green dot and that midpoint center point which gives you a perfectly symmetrical rectangle or square. That's what you would have done back in the olden days. However, recently in Inventor 2013 I want to say, they've in included a new rectangle uh, function called the two point rectangle. Now this was, it was originally and you could get an add-on that did this but they've now baked it into the core uh, product. So you create a two point rectangle now and what you want to do is snap to the midpoint just snap to that center point and pull away and it gives you now an automatically created uh, constrained rectangle around the center point. Look at that. Brilliant. Same if you're doing circle feet, uh, circular part files. Create a circle and always snap the circle to the center point. Exactly the same effect. Right, what I'm then going to do is just to finish off this part and do a, a quick extrusion. Uh, let's do uh, width equals uh, 400 and then here we can have uh, to length equals that uh, divided by two or something. What have I just done there? What was that you were doing there, Neil? I've got another video in my tips and tricks series which shows how to uh, manage parameters. Check that one out. That will show you what I've just done there. Right, so when I go to finish sketch and then perform an extrusion, again, if this is a symmetrical part, do your extrusion and then use the mid-plane or symmetric option done. What we have now, if we look at our origin planes, the YZ, XZ and XY planes, all of our standard origin work planes now perfectly intersect all center lines of our part. We've given ourselves some center lines or center planes to work with. So you or anybody else that picks up your part file and has to work on it can use these planes for mirrors for example so you would say you want to create a slot here or a tapped hole here and you need another one on the other side you can use the origin planes as mirror center lines to mirror features across that and a whole host of other reasons why this is useful but hopefully you can see why this is actually a really good idea also when you put the part into an assembly you can use these standard planes to uh, align the part in the assembly so you can use it for uh, assembly constraints and that's very useful as well. The good thing about this, you probably say, well, yeah, I can create work, if I want to do a mirror, I can create my own work plane to do that, I don't need this. Well, you can, 
but the origin planes are fixed. They were never changed. They're always there. If you create a work plane, it can be moved, it can be deleted, it can be messed about with. These are fixed. These are standard across all part files and they will never change. Trust me, start your part file this way. You will be instantly respected by all your colleagues in your drawn office. They will go, oh, God, he knows what he's doing. Well, I'm glad he did that. He's helped me out. And yeah, so hopefully you found that useful. It's the quick way to start a part file, the best way and the correct way to start a part file using the center point origin as a, as a center point. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Okay. Well, thanks for, thanks for checking that out. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did press like, is it shares my videos and it lets me know that you like them and I'll make some more and that sort of thing. And uh, everyone's happy. So thanks very much for checking it out. And until next time, guys, see ya.